Welcome back to yet another I'm a 3D tutorial. I know it's been a while, but let's get started. So what we're going to do is an FPS sort of game with uh, a war running mechanic that we'll do in next video, hopefully. And what we're going to do today is make the camera and the player movement system that is going to strand from a single variable. So we have full control over the actual uh, value, full control over the speed. And uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, build upon this template that I have. I just got a simple texture. I got a capsule and I got a camera. Nothing fancy, no code, no nothing, so don't worry. And uh, what we're going to do is shift S to put the cursor to the camera. And we need to add an empty object. This is very important for doing up and down movements with the camera. So in an FPS game, you want to look side to side and up and down. And to do that, we need to actually have an empty object. We can't do it with the actual player. And I'll show you that uh, demonstration in a minute. Uh, so let's just shift, select the player, control P to parent these two objects together. So they move uh, together. Control P. And now when we move the base player, everything moves with it. And the reason we need this uh, empty object is the fact that we can move left to right fine with the player. So if we move the player left to right, the camera is moving left to right. But if we want to move the player up and down to look at the top and the bottom, well, that just doesn't work out very well because it flips the player. So it'll fall flat on his face or on his back. So what we want it to do is to have an empty so we can actually look up and down without needing to move the player. That's just a little uh, trick to get around the... Uh, face palm and you're, you're playing to the ground every time you look up. So what we want to do now is actually add some logic. So let's go over to the player traits, army traits, and add in a node tree. Let's call this FPS. Let's open up a uh, logic node editor and grab the FPS node tree. So what we want to do is to grab a on update node so we can do this every single frame and what we're going to do is actually rotate the camera so let's grab a rotate node rotate object and the object we want to rotate is the player so we can leave it blank by default but for the heck of it I'm just gonna select the sphere the player and uh, right here we have a bunch of values the X Y and Z um, axes and they're all linked to a single socket we don't want that we want to separate them so we grab a vector node a vector node is going to split out this vector the all these vectors from that single socket and it's going to add the, uh, it's going to split them out into the their separate sockets so we can use this so let's go ahead and grab a movement a mouse movement because uh, we want to obviously rotate the camera depending on where the mouse is located and what we need to do is grab the multiplied x and plug it into the z. And then we want to multiply this with delta time. So let's go ahead and grab a math node. Set it to multiply. Plug the result into the x because we're using the x multiplied. And we're going to actually put a value on the top one here. So maybe 0 0.1. And what we're going to do now is add delta to this last value that we're going to multiply it with. So let's grab the application time. There we go. And the application time node gives us the time and the delta value. The delta value essentially means it's going to sync up um, and smooth out the value, as in 0 0.1 in this case, among all devices and all frameworks, or not frameworks, frame rates. So if you have a device with 60 FPS, then it's going to run this value smoothly at 0 0.1. And if, on the other hand, you have a device at 200 frames per second, it's going to calculate to see what that device uh, should, what, what value that device should be running at to make it a smooth 0 0.1 on all devices. And it's just um, super easy to get around problems. So delta time is sorted and we have everything working. So let's go ahead and test out our little game. As you can see, we have some issues with the camera because it's not zoomed out far enough. But when we move side to side, our player is rotating. If we move up and down, nothing's happening yet. So what we can do first of all to fix the camera is to set the uh, focal length to something like 12, I like, find it a good value. And that would give us a very good field of view so we can actually see what's going on in our scene. And now what we want to do is, I'll tell you what, just add a cube here for reference. That's not important. What we want to do is just copy everything along. So control 
shift um shift d i mean not control and what we want to do now is to rotate the camera up and down and like i said we're using this empty object here so instead of the player the sphere we want to use the empty object and the reason we have a sphere in the first place is to detect collisions but we haven't actually added physics to it yet because we don't really need to for what we're doing we'll do that later so what we're going to do now is to actually use the y multiplied value and plug that into the x so we can unplug this one and one other change we need to make of course is to plug in the result into the y as well because we're not using the x anymore and there we go now we have a good sort of camera movement setup so if we try playing this now again you should notice that we have a much smoother looking camera and it moves all the way around so up down side to side yay however there is a single problem and that's the fact that our mouse isn't actually it's not glued so it's rotating around and to fix that it's really easy let's just add the cursor state node when the mouse is down we're going to add the cursor to be locked and started okay and now what we want to do is just to unlock it when the uh, keyboard is pressed the mouse the key in question is going to be started and it's going to be escape and that's going to unlock our screen okay okay and one last thing i want to do is actually hide the player's visibility in the render and that actually hides it in the game as well so now when we play we can actually look down at our feet and there won't actually be a, a shell so obviously when i click i can look around and i can look all the way down and it's like a, I'm a floating head. Right. Now what we want to do is actually add a movement system. So let's move this over here. I'm going to frame all this up. There we go. So we can actually see the different events. Can't be bothered to name them yet, but we can just see them as their own separate thing. And what we're going to do now is, like I said, we're going to spawn the movement out of a single variable so we have full control over the entire movement system. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we're going to the objects um, data property panel here and make sure you select the actual player shell. So when we go down here, we do have a panel that says properties in the armory properties. If we click plus, you can see a bunch of different options, a boolean, a float, an integer, and a string. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, you should know what these are. So I'm going to head and grab a float value. And I'm going to call the uh, value speed, maybe. Speed seems good. And I'm going to set it to 0 0.5. Let's test it. 0 0.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to get property get the object property the object property of our player here and the property name being speed and so that is the, now we have when we get this value here the value will be 0 0.5 so this is our value essentially and what we're going to do is we're going to translate the object and we obviously don't want it to be translated to all these axes. We want it to be separated. So yes, again, we need another vector node. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to translate this object whenever a key is pressed. So let's go ahead and grab a key node. And the key in question is going to be uh, down and it's going to be W. So we're going to go forwards. So as you can see here, it's Y positive. So if I go Y positive, it moves it forward. So what we're going to do is plug in this to VY. And it's a positive value, so we don't need to do anything else. Okay. Now what we need to do is essentially do the same thing for all the different things. Uh, so S is going to be a negative. So we need to actually add a negative um, math node. So let's grab that, put it in the Y, set it to sub, um, let's set it to multiply, I guess. And what we're going to multiply is by minus one. So 
0 0.5 minus 1 is just going to give us a, minus, a negative value of that value. So anything that you multiply minus 1 is going to give you that value in a negative. So that's exactly what we want, the value in reverse. So that's going to give us forwards and backwards. Let's go ahead and test this out, make sure it works. So as you can see, I can look around when I press forwards, I move backwards. It's obviously very fast. I probably don't want it to be this fast. And it's not, not in local axes either. If I look to the side and press W, I'm still moving forwards uh, where the player was facing originally. So what we need to do is just make sure you check local axes. But we know that this works. And so what we need to do now is just the same thing again. Copy it. Shift D. Move it down. Uh, set it to be, uh, what is it? A. A is going to be X negative, so we need that multiply node and plug in the value and put it into the X. So that's going to give us an X negative because obviously the value that we're getting is 0 0.5. In fact, we can go ahead and change that right now because it's too fast. Put it 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 maybe, something really slow because uh, we don't have much terrain. And what we're going to do again is, for the last time, move it over, get D, and just plug the value into X. So here we have our entire movement system based upon a single variable, a single value that you can change at any time without needing to go into these nodes, these crazy nodes. All this is done and dusted. You can control everything from that single properties panel over here. So let's go ahead, save, and go ahead and play this. And as you can see, I can move around, I can move forwards in any direction. I can move side, and I can move back. It's, yeah, it's a good movement system. I obviously can't jump yet, but... Uh, so as you can see, our movement system is complete. We have a single property that controls all of the movement of forwards, backwards, left and right. And the reason this is so important is that if we have like a, a an object that we have here, for example, that when we collide with, it gives us a boost or it slows us down, then all that can be affected by just changing this variable to a lower value, the variable that is on the player over here. All we need to do is when collided, set set property equals uh, whatever you want it to be, 0, 1, 100, you know, boost it or slow it down or whatever you want to do with the property, whatever you want to do with the speed of the movement of the player, you can do it without any problem. So that is just really simple, really useful, and I hope you enjoyed it. Next video, we'll do uh what we'll, we'll talk about physics do us a little parkour game as you can see on screen right now i've already made like a test thing that i've uh i've been playing with for a little bit and uh, it's got some nice shading to it and uh we'll start doing more running so i'll see you in the next video